To abuse an innocent, helpless child is despicable and a grievous crime against God and humanity. In order to check this anomaly, the 1989 United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Child, which sets out the civil, political, economic, social, health and cultural rights of children, was adopted and domesticated in Nigeria in the year 2003 as the Child Rights Act. You are watching Naptip on the Move, and I am Imanalo Keke. Thank you for joining us. On this episode, we will focus on issues pertaining to child abuse in Nigeria and the role of Naptip in curbing this very ugly occurrence. Stay with Naptip on the Move. The Child Rights Act of 2003 provides for the welfare, best interest and protection of every Nigerian child. It also stipulates elements that constitute child abuse. You can abuse a child physically, mentally. You call the child all sorts of names and make the child feel not capable of, of, of being able to achieve anything. And that child grows up to lose confidence in himself or herself. So that way you've abused that child mentally. And physically, you can abuse a child through torture, bad ill treatment and things like that. So child abuse, you know, it's you know something that can affect a child either through the mind or the physical appearance. We are not saying that you cannot discipline your child. But well, there's a thin line between discipline and abuse. If you excessively beat a child to inflict injury on that child, then it becomes abuse. We have sexual abuse of children. Under the Child Rights Act, a child is entitled to certain you know, good things of life, certain benefit and certain rights, so to say, including having a good name. When a child is born, you give the child a name. And a child is entitled to play at playtime. A child is entitled to be enrolled in school. A child is entitled to freedom of movement. A child is entitled to happiness. When a child is not allowed to grow its normal growth, both physically and spiritually, mentally, you know, you have subjected that type to child abuse. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons is charged with the responsibility of protecting abused children. NAPTIP also um, administers the uh, Violence Against Persons uh, Prosecution Act. And so, you know, it's domiciled with NAPTIP. So we are not only concerned with issues of human or child trafficking, but we're also concerned with issues of violence against persons, which and child abuse is, of course, one of those acts of violence against persons. We investigate cases of violence or any form, any form of abuse against them, we investigate it. And once it is found that, yes, this child was abused, we come after the person. And the evidence of that particular child is sacrosanct to us. Gone are the days they will say, oh, that child is a child. You know, if that child, the statement is not uh, corroborated, then you cannot use it. But the judges are becoming very conscious of the fact that, yes, children, 
you know, can speak the truth, you know. So when they say it happened to them, and they are able to give the story graphically, I believe that evidence should say true. Instances of physical abuse of children has become rampant. We have like a case of a father using, you know, this uh, fence wires that has all those sharp ends to beat the child. And you ask yourself, what did this child do? The child misplaced a key, house key, which was later found. But you inflicted injury on the child that the child almost died. So I don't, I don't, it's painful to see children, innocent children, going through this kind of pain. We've had cases where um, a child's hands were dipped in hot water and then a child was, another case where a child, um, hot iron was put on the child's body. In fact, there are so many gory cases I don't even want to talk about, you know, it makes me very upset. You know, so we've been able to rescue such children, take them to the shelter, rehabilitate them and uh, prosecute um, the offenders. To employers of domestic servants, there is a stipulated age limit given the prevalence of the use of underaged children. What we have in our current law is 12 years you know, and above. You know, but that is, it depends on the circumstances. For us, we are advocating that a child should not be able to walk until that child is above 17, meaning 18 and above. That is when we believe that child has good bargaining power to be able to bargain for his or her wages. When we say, if a child is 12 years old, that you can take that child as a domestic servant, we are not saying that this child will walk in your house from 2 a.m. till 11 p.m. We are saying that you give that child work or what to do that is commensurate to that child's age. And that child must be well taken care of. The money is paid to the child. We know there are some children who are so interested in going back to school or being educated, they want to do some jobs for like a year, save their money and go back to school when they know that their parents cannot take them back to school or give them the education they need. So in such a situation, the child is allowed to work. But when that child works, the money should be paid to the child and not to anybody else. Because if you pay it somebody else, then it's an abuse on the child and it can be termed as human trafficking. Hawking is another form of child abuse. Taking things out to go and hawk is abuse on the child. Look at the risk that follows that. It's very enormous. You have kidnapping, you have the risk of the child being hit by a car, so the risk, exposing that child to all these risks is not good for the child, it's not for the interest of that child. So we are saying, if you are a parent and you are trading, please let your child help you sitting in your shop, of course, after school hours. But do not allow your child to hawk things around. There is also a worrisome trend of rape and defilement of children. Um, in the years past, people will look at it as, oh, it's an abuse done by other people. But unfortunately, in modern days, parents, fathers, mothers, sexually abuse their children, which is bad. We have other cases where a neighbor, you have a girl, a small girl, going to school, coming back from school, and what you want to do is to defile this child. We parents, we need to ask ourselves questions and we need to know that these children are given to us by God for us to take care of, not to hurt. Shelter services provided by the agency is a major strategy in handling cases of child abuse. The shelter we have is called Halfway Home. It is shelters meant to uh, protect these uh, 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 victims. You know, 
so that we can have access to them. We have a department called Counseling and Reputation Department where we have counselors, psychologists who take care of the emotional stability, physiological stability of these uh, victims, you know, to have them stable, you know, mentally and be able to tell us the story of how, what happened to them. So I will tell you that our shelter is our strong, one of our strongest points in combating crime. Because once a crime takes place, we are able to rescue the victim from the scene of crime, separate them from the evaluators. By so doing, issue of uh, what they call it, threats will not arise any longer. Because they threaten some of these victims not to talk. So but once that victim is in our shelter, then we have separated them from the evaluator. So they will now be stable and they feel happy. What we do is provide comfortable accommodation for them, health services, because some of them that come in with physical abuse, when you see them, you will shed tears. So what we do is provide medicals. We have retainership with some hospitals where we take them to if our medical personnel are not able to handle such cases. Then in the shelters, we also put them through informal education because sometimes they are not in school. And those who are in school that are abused, when we receive them, we ensure that we engage them to make sure that they are not idle. We provide counseling services also to them. We provide vocational skills where they learn how to make beads, fashion designing, hairdressing. We also provide feeding to make sure that they are well fed and they undergo some um, curriculum activities where um, they can play ball, religious um, activities also. So we try as much as possible to engage them and we have qualified staff who uh, provide such services to them. Data on sheltered victims reveal an alarming rate of child abuse in the society. Presently at the shelter, the Abuja shelter, we have like 74 victims there. Four of them are babies. Cases of rape that now um, give out babies there. Um, out of the 70, I can tell you that about 60 of them are abuse cases, different types of abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. And it's very unfortunate because the population is increasing. We are getting more cases of abuse each day. Sheltering services is not without its challenges. The challenges we have are hinges on providing rehabilitation services. So when we rescue them and we provide rehabilitation services in terms of accommodation, counseling, when we need to reintegrate them back into the society, we need to provide them with services that will help them function in that society. If it means taking them back to school to make sure we provide their um, school fees and all the educational materials they need, ensure that they are comfortable. If they want to learn any skill, to be able to train them in their communities and also to provide empowerment uh, materials to make sure that they function in the communities that they are from. The agency has recorded some successes in the prosecution of child abuse cases. Um, we've gotten uh, 27 uh, convictions in this area so far and we're hoping to have more conviction in this area because the more people we're able to put behind bars, the happier for us, and more so we, 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 it will serve as deterrent to others. Because uh, one thing with combating crime in every society is to ensure that others don't follow the footsteps of these bad people. So it will serve as a signal that the law is working, the federal government of Nigeria is not relaxing on its own in combating crime, and not being is a government agency is all force doing all everything it needs to do to combat all these crimes. To curb child abuse, providing an enabling environment, education and sports is key. We are appealing to local government uh, authorities, we are appealing to state government authorities to establish more social centers, you know, where children who cannot be properly taken care of by those who, you know, brought them to this world can be taken to. The federal government is doing whatever it should do, you know. But state government, uh, local government should do everything they need to do. All child of children should be in school. You know, if the family is not able to support that, government should, should do that. So we are happy that uh, there are some reforms taking place 
you know, in uh, most, most states. And the federal government is also aiding and assisting them. And for the children too that cannot go far with their education, honestly speaking, there are other avenues. Sports are there. Several sporting activities are available where children can harness their talents, you know, and they will still be a better person, you know. And the entertainment area is also there. So we should encourage ourselves to ensure that our children, you know, get some kind of uh, knowledge. You know, once you have that, that knowledge, you go places. Parents are advised to live up to their responsibilities. It's important for us to know that an abused child today, if not provided with services, is a time bomb tomorrow, waiting to blow up. So we have to know that. Know where your child is at any given time. Know what your child is doing. So parents must do their duties. We must meet up our responsibilities. We must take charge. I just want to advise parents to bring up their children properly and not to give out their young children to anyone. Even relations, friends, or so-called well-wishers who think they want to assist. And that age between five years to 18 years is the most important time of their lives. And if you get it wrong, you, you, you can either, you, you ruin the child for life, you know. So it's very important that parents just try hard to take care of their children, keep them under their wings until they are mature enough to go out of the homes. The agency also encourages the general public to report cases of child abuse. If you see any child that is being abused, either mentally or physically, please report to NAPTI and NAPTI will definitely come to the rescue of the child and prosecute the offender. There is no excuse for child abuse. Stop the silence and join hands with NAPTI to kick child abuse out of Nigeria. Human trafficking is one of the worst crimes on earth. It is a grave violation of your human rights. The victims of human trafficking are majorly women, youths, children and men who may never live to tell the story. These victims could be your wife, daughter, mother, sister, brother, child or relative. No one deserves to be trafficked. NAPTIP has intensified its effort against this heinous crime. But we need your support. We need you to join this fight. Government officials, corporate organizations, traditional rulers, religious leaders, and the organized private sector have enlisted in this fight. What are you waiting for? Join NAPTI to end this global moral epidemic now. Report cases of human trafficking to these NAPTI hotlines 0703 00 00203 NAPTIP 80 NAPTIP empowered to protect you a child may be dying in silence right under your nose so be vigilant and report cases of child abuse to NAPTIP up next is NAPTIP events don't go away <music> The Director General of NAPTIP, Dingeli Akadani, and the entire management team of the agency recently paid a cut to visit to the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyama. Dingeli Akadani then stated the purpose of her visit. Our mission here today um, is to deepen our relationship you know, with NAPTIP, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Nigerian embassies in the fight against um, human trafficking. Um, the new dimension now, which is giving all of us serious headache, is this mass recruitment um, to Saudi Arabia, Oman, Dubai, Egypt, and so on. And there's a lot of organ harvesting also going on in countries like that, you know, and there is need uh, to do something very seriously um, about um, this trend. She also made some requests that will strengthen the fight against human trafficking. Um, I would like to seek assistance um, in, this, um, in the following areas. Um, proper intervention in the issue of the mass recruitment of Nigerians to Saudi Arabia and other Middle East um, countries. I want to suggest also, even though I know you have your own strategies, that um, one way to do this is to interface 
with the embassies involved and probably provide some more stringent conditions to be met uh, by Nigerians going for labor before visas are issued. Um, to provide a regular platform for NAPTI to train the Nigerian diplomats, including the foreign affairs officers going for posting abroad on the issues of human trafficking, including victim identification, treatment, and how to assist victims, and all the tricks involved in trafficking, and of course posting active officers to endemic countries, in all the embassies in endemic countries. The Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs responded to the issues raised. I recall very fondly our visit um, to uh, Libya, where I certainly got um, first-hand uh, experience of some of the challenges that, uh, that NAPTIP has to deal with on a regular uh, basis. And, um, <clears throat> and of course, um, one was then able to really appreciate the scope uh, and the nature of, um, of trafficking and um, the serious challenge that it poses for us as a country. And of course, it's something that affects also the, 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 the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, our mandate, you know, because these are children of ours are being trafficked to, to foreign countries. Um, so we, we have a <coughs> an enormous responsibility also as a ministry to cooperate uh, with you in addressing what uh, for us is um, uh, one of the worst scourges that this country is, uh, is facing uh, at the moment. He then proffered some solutions. One area that uh, we have to look at very clearly is the, these labor contracts and arrangements that are, that are, that are made uh, as a cloak for, for, for trafficking uh, some of these people. So we will probably have to uh, present to Mr. President possibly the arguments for um, banning altogether the issuance of visas to uh, Nigerians below a certain age who are going or supposedly going for unskilled uh, uh, labor and work. We'll have to also look at the possibility and um, of having, you know, NAPTIP officials uh, maybe also stationed in some of the embassies, you know, where we consider uh, the, the particularly problematic countries, because clearly you, you, your people have the training and uh, maybe the capacity to identify, um, you know, traffic persons from irregular uh, uh, migrants, and I think that that's an important uh, distinction. The visit to the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs was very fruitful as both parties pledged to foster closer collaboration. The fight against human trafficking in Nigeria has recorded yet another victory as the Federal High Court sitting in Sokoto, Sokoto State, sentenced the 25-year-old man Samaila Jelani to four years imprisonment for human trafficking. The offender was arraigned by the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons on a two-count charge of sexually exploiting an underage girl and harboring the said underage girl in his friend's house with intent to further exploit her sexually. Both acts contravene Section 16 Sub 1 and Section 15 Sub B of the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition, Enforcement and Administration Act of 2015. The presiding judge, Justice Saleh Idrissa, found the accused guilty of procuring an underage girl for sexual exploitation and subsequently sentenced him to four years imprisonment without an option of fine. This brings the total number of convictions to 343. The judiciary is highly commended for ensuring that justice is served. Officers of the Enugu State Zulu Command of NAPTIP busted a ring of human traffickers specialized in the sale of babies and children in the southeastern part of Nigeria. The successful operation led to the recovery of four children. Three have been reunited with their parents, while a boy who is about two years old is yet to be reunited as all attempts to trace his parents have proved unsuccessful. We have to break protocol to reveal his face as we plead with all well-meaning Nigerians and anyone who can identify him to please inform his parents or relations to visit the Naptiv Zonal Command in Enugu State with relevant documents and medical records for identification and reunion. 
If anyone has a need, please call the following number 0708 060 1803 For more inquiries and support or to report cases of suspected human trafficking and child abuse, please call NAPTIV hotlines on 0703 00-00-203 or 0800-2255-627847 or email info at naptip.gov.ng Visit our website www.naptip.gov.ng Follow us on our social media platforms at Naptip Nigeria and watch our videos on YouTube. It's time to say goodbye, but not without urging you to rise up to the occasion. Save a life today by reporting cases of human trafficking, domestic violence, and child abuse to NAPTIP. I am Imanolo Keke. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>